Starting up. Uh, okay, we are starting. Great. So, I guess uh, title slide. So, hello everyone. Thank you for coming out today. Um, yeah. So today we're going to talk about graphics programming with processing. Um, as everyone was installing the software, as we said earlier, processing is a programming language that is designed to actually specialize in helping out with graphics processing um, in the sense that you can create graphical displays and see pictures much more easily than in the other programming languages that you might encounter. And so I think with that, we are ready to get started. So everyone has processing up on their screen, it looks like. So um, let's begin. So how many of us have actually programmed before? A little bit? OK, perfect. So I think this is going to be good, because today we want to go over the basics of programming as well. And we'll just incorporate the uh, graphics techniques as well. So the one thing to know is um, don't worry if you haven't programmed. It's very similar to just speaking in a slightly different language. And so how we'll start is by writing a really, really basic processing program. And so the thing to consider is that when we speak, for example, every English sentence has to have a capital letter and end in a punctuation mark. Would everyone agree with this? Great. So in the same way, just like how the English sentence has these rules and structure, a program in most languages has its own required structure. And so together, we're going to write a really basic structure for processing. So if we all get our windows up and ready. Excellent. So we're just going to write the very basics. Just like how any English sentence has to have the capital letter and a punctuation mark, every processing program. I you can zoom this in because um, I don't think you can. I mean, I know the uh, kids in here have sharper vision than I do, but. Let's give Control Plus a try. No. Nope. I don't think it's for the. <laughs> you could change the resolution of the screen. Yeah. But, yeah right. Can you just go ahead and. Are changing your resolution down. Uh, we can give that a shot. This is unfortunately Linux, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was like a. Yeah, just forget that. I can. Yeah. 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 I don't think so. Yeah. So can people actually see the screen in the back? Yeah. Yes. All right. So I think we might have to just go with this for uh, now. And I'll make sure that I type in correctly. Okay. Great. I was if you go to pref find preferences, find preferences. Uh, does it have a font option? Yeah, and then you see this. Uh, yeah, so instead editor of, font size. Yeah, okay. Of 12. So let's see how big is 36. Um, console, you'll want to make that larger too. Oh, thank um, you. Make that 24. Right. Oh, there we go. All right. Is that better for everyone? That's better. Okay, Can excellent. You read it? Okay, great. So then in that case, Every um, So you can see it even changes colors when you're typing in certain special words. That tells you that you're on the right track. So what we are going to write is the word void. And then we are going to write setup. We will open and close some parentheses. We will open a bracket and close a bracket. OK, and then we will also write void draw. And we will also use parentheses and the brackets. Yeah, so I know this will look a little weird, but this is just like how an English sentence always has the capital letter and ends in punctuation. And we'll see in a moment that this actually will give us our first program. What's the difference between this and scratch? If I Sorry? Between this and scratch. Mm -hmm. is, the, is the difference between processing and scratch a big difference? Um, in terms of the final product, I would say no. But in terms of creating, yes. So scratch is about dragging and dropping many blocks. And that pre-creates the code. But in this case, you're actually typing the code as if you're typing in Java or any other real language. Yeah. So I would say, if anything, processing would be a good bridge between Scratch and other programming languages in terms of the output you get. But I guess still, the fact that you're dragging and dropping blocks versus typing is still a large disconnect. And I, I think that it has. Uh, Java, enabled, you can also use Python or something else, right? Um, yes, you could incorporate. There are special extensions for processing that go in those languages, but processing itself is actually taking Java, and then they actually add it on top of the Java language. 
Okay. Yeah, so actually everything that works in Java will work in processing. Okay. Okay, so has everyone written this line of code? Great. So then you should have a play button up here in the top left corner, I believe. So let's all give it a quick click. And we should see a little screen here that pops up. So everybody, when they're first doing it, you get this message to say, um, allow access. Okay. Something bad. Windows is just paranoid. It asked for like a password and it was out. It for a password? Yeah. Because of, I think this is bottom Where is it written down? What? I've got that password. Give us a moment, we'll have the password. Maybe. So. <laughs> okay, for those of you who are watching, um, we are experiencing some difficulties with the laptops that were given to us. One moment. Yeah, write it on the board because, oh. yeah. Oh, do we have a whiteboard? Oh, I hope I have a marker. Three. Oh, yes, I do. So, 3, D-U-C, space, 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 D U C ampersand. Oops. That's my problem. Exclamation point. Uh, yeah, zero. it's oh, there's another one on yeah. is that um that's for the uh, they worked. No, no, that's to log into the Windows. Yeah, I mean I could possibly write that okay, but I don't know if there's code up there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they care about it. Hopefully, once they do this once, we won't have to do it again. Yeah. All right. So, okay. how many people have gotten this password in so far? So, have you? Uh, sorry, sorry. No, I just. I mm -hmm. Are you able to get it to show up? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, great. Oh. Yeah. So you got the password in? Would you like me to type it? Oh, she doesn't know like that. Oh, that's, that's just you, right? Yeah, it always throws me out, too. Uh, uh, getting past the phone. Oh, there's no there's with that, yeah, so I just go, oh, is Well, I'd say, yeah. All right, so that's yeah, that's something with circles. circles. All right. And no, no, I mean, so you gotten into it? Yeah. All right, no. you're already trying to do advanced things. You're actually cool. Yes, okay. Thank you. Uh, and so, I think everybody's ready now. Excellent. All right, so everyone got this uh, blank screen to show up then. Good. So, yeah, so this is a very default basic window, but this is the screen that we will be working with very soon. The one thing that we will, oh, is everyone ready? OK. So yeah. Don't worry, some of them are way ahead of you. Oh, that's, that's, I, that's perfectly fine. If you guys want to play around, please go ahead. We're just giving the basics for everyone who's trying to get the ropes. Yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you all, because this looks like a weird thing to have these weird words set up and draw. And so next, we're going to quickly play around with a few basic commands to see just what these are doing. And this will actually show us what processing does that's a little different from most other programming languages. And so within setup, we're going to write, this is actually the first program you'll normally write in any programming language, and it's called hello world. So to do this, we are going to write print, and then we'll open a parenthesis, and then we are going to write hello world in quotes. And we will end it with a semicolon to tell it that we have reached the uh, end of the command. Okay, has everyone written this? Great, so we can hit the play button again. And we will see that we still get our default screen, but at the same time, here at the bottom of the uh, window, we actually get a message. Oh, yeah. 
No, it does print at the. So if you look here at the bottom, you'll see it printed. Uh, this is because we use the print command. So the good use of um, print is it can actually allow you to quickly display messages to the users. And also, when you're trying to test your code, it allows you to actually write error messages there. So that way, you can know if something goes wrong inside the code. But we'll see in a minute that there's another use for uh, this uh, screen that will actually show us what the difference is between setup and draw. So if everyone's ready to move on, what we're going to do is we will actually, first we will hide this line for now. So in case people don't know, if you do two slashes, that will actually hide a line of code. We call it commenting. You can also use commenting to actually uh, leave a message. So the line below is not being used. And this will allow us to actually just leave messages to ourselves which will be very important when you try to read this code later on. Oops. And so instead, let us write the hello world line of code again, but now we're going to write it in the draw function. All right, is everyone ready? Oh, one minute? OK. Oh, someone pressed the play button. <laughs> so you can see they're a little bit different then. Yeah, so once you hit uh, play, you see something that's going to happen. So you want to pin this with the uh, quotation? Okay. Wait, and after the question, you want semicolon. Yeah, do it. Okay, ready? Uh, now hit play. Oh, good. And you see how many passages of this hello world. Is everything OK? And that's because this the draw and the setup. It's not actually. I just said it the word down here. Why does it have like a bunch of them? That's funny. I don't we'll explain that in just a minute. <laughs> so the reason that you're getting the hello world to your computer is just right. repeatedly. So it looks like everyone has pressed the play button. So I'll do the same. So if you uh, look down here at the printing, you get the word hello world many times. And so this is where the biggest difference between processing and a lot of other languages comes in. And this is actually why it's used to be able to make movies and games and such, is when you're running things through processing, we actually have this uh, special little structure here where when you call the setup command, it's run one time. And the idea is just what it's called, setup. So it will set up a lot of the background information. So for example, if you're playing a game, you need to set up the first level before the game can begin. Or if you're making a movie, you need to first allocate everything that you need for all the character data and all the characters that are going to move around and perhaps even some important parts of the environment that you're going to record. And so setup is called once to literally set everything up. And then it goes to the draw command, which will actually draw something on the screen. But how many of us have ever seen a Disney movie and seen how it's made? OK, so a few of us. So everyone's seen then the frame by frame animation. Maybe you've made a flip book before. Yeah, so when you make a flip book, it flips through many pages, right? And each one is a separate drawing. And so draw is doing the same thing. It draws on the screen for that first page of the flip note. But instead of flipping to another page, because you only have the one screen, it then has to draw again. And it will draw again and again and again. And each time it will actually change the drawing if you have different commands for what to draw each time. But for now, all we have in our draw command is printing this hello world statement. And so every single time that it would have been drawing something new on the screen, we have the word hello world appear again. Now, there's something to be pointed out with you know flip books and all that. There's so many frames per second that you're worried about. With this, it's running as many times as the computer will let it. It's Actually, there is a frame rate. Is there a yes. Frame rate? It's not um, it defaults to 30 frames per second. I it was higher. 60 can be done, but it defaults to 30. Because I know some things have been pretty weird. OK, but you can change the frame rate. Yes, you can, and we will do that in a little bit. For some reason, I thought it was like, I had some things where it went like 100. I was like, OK. Right. But yeah, so we'll stop this now so we stop having Hello World appear. And the one other thing we will take advantage of now is because this looks kind of strange because it prints hello world over and over and it doesn't look very clean. 
So one thing for when you print messages that might help with making it look a little better, if you look below your backspace key, you'll see this weird little looking slash. And if you put the letter N after it, this symbol actually means go to the next line. And so what happens when you run this one is now we have the word hello world appearing over and over again. And it's just hard to see because there's not much um, display room here. So let me drag this up. And you can see hello world is displaying continuously on multiple lines now. Because at the end of hello world, we're now printing this character which says go to the next line. Right. So just to make sure, because this is a good point to check in. Has everyone written this much? Anyone need us to wait a second? All right, great. So we can move on then. So I think the next thing we can do for a little bit of fun is now that we've seen that we can print a lot of stuff to the screen, we've seen that we did have a regular screen, though. We haven't done anything fun with that yet. So I think it's time now that we know how processing actually works with this uh, setting up and drawing things. I think it's actually time that we started drawing some material. So. Let us start by writing to the screen, writing to our little screen instead of writing to this uh, message window. And for this, we're going to use a command called text. So I'm going to just write hello world again. And then the one other thing we have to do now is because we have a screen, I'm going to quickly switch over. We have to now consider that we actually have a coordinate grid that we're drawing on. And so the top left corner of our screen will always be 0, 0. And the bottom right corner is going to have some value of width and height that we specify. And how do we specify that is a very good question. And this is exactly the kind of thing that we need to set up before we begin. So what we will do here is we will actually set a size. So I'm going to choose a width of 500 and a height of 300. You guys can choose any size you prefer. Just make sure that it's within reason for your computer. So I think most computers these days are maybe about a little over 1,000 in width and around 750 in height. And then I'm just going to, because you have to tell the text where it's going to appear on this giant screen, I'm telling it to go at uh, 50 across and 25 down. So has everyone written text out? Okay. So when you guys have that working, you should be able to see this message appear on the screen. Oh, sorry. Thanks. No problem. I'm oh, sorry, so is it still too small for everyone in the back to see them? Oh, that's great. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure because I think some people in the back are having trouble. It's good enough for me, and that's what really matters. Well, we have a few more people to care about. Sorry. <laughs> So, has everybody ran that so far? So, if you run this, you probably notice that the text looks a little strange, right? It's kind of hard to read. You know what it is, but it kind of looks like the ink on your pen has bled through and makes it very difficult to actually read what's going on, right? The words look fuzzy. Is that what everybody's kind of seeing? 
So the reason it's doing this is because the draw command is being ran apparently 30 times every second. So it's actually printing hello world on top of itself constantly. So it's like tracing on paper. You're not, you're losing the details. So we don't want to do that every time because it makes it difficult to read what's going on. So we actually need to insert another line to prevent this from happening. So each time we draw stuff, we want to clear it after. So I'll let Rick continue. Um, because when it comes to animation, you want to change, like you know, maybe you have a character moving around the screen. So you want to update that location each time. So you might have something that's going on. So if you put it in the setup, it's only going to appear at one time. So that's that's really why. But in terms of not having a bleed and you just only doing Hello World, that would actually work just fine. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Right. So as Marvin was uh, just saying, I guess I'm not sure if the mic could pick you up, so I'll just repeat it. Um, yeah. So because we call draw every single time, it's actually writing the word hello world on top of itself because we don't move it over and over. And so just like when you keep putting a stamp on a piece of paper, it eventually bleeds ink and it gets thicker. So if we add the clear command in between, it'll actually erase the screen. And this is actually very important when you're doing any animations in general because otherwise you would be drawing each of the different uh, pictures when you're flipping through your flipbook on top of each other instead of seeing each one separately. So this clear is like going to the next sheet of paper. And so when you run this one, you'll actually see that the screen, first of all, turned black, actually. And then the word hello world is very small. So I'll give everyone a second, and then we'll explain why things change so drastically with that one command. And point out why we want it at the top. Right. Yeah. So actually, what is interesting is in the setup command, it defaults the screen to a grayish color. But the truth is, when you clear it, you wipe everything. and the value 0, 0, 0 is actually the color for black, because black is the symbol of no color at all. So when it actually clears, it gets rid of this default, and it actually sets everything to black. So the question is, if it keeps clearing to black, what happens if we want a real color? And so this is where we uh, learn our next graphics command. And we will actually put it here. And this is background. And so within background, is everyone familiar with red, blue, and green? All right, excellent. So then, yeah, so you can give it any red, blue, green color combination you want. So 0 to 25 for red, 0 to 25 for green, blue, green, and 0 to 25 for blue. And you'll just pick these three numbers. It'll make some colors. And because we call it after clear, before we actually see the black screen, it will recolor the screen for us. So I guess I will go for a nice blue background. And that's actually green, I just realized, sorry. RGB. Yes, RGB, yes, not RBG. Thank you. All right, and so if I run this, I have a nice blue background with the word hello world. And because I also didn't get rid of the print statements, we still have hello world also running down here. So you can see we have many things that go on at once, and we've only written about four lines of code. Oh, uh, yes, please feel free to play around with other colors. Yes. Is everyone giving this a shot? OK. So I'm going to show now why it's very important. Just like in English, sometimes the sentences you say, the order of the sentences will make a difference. And in the same way, it also happens to the computer code. So let me remove this background command and put it before the clear command. Does anyone want to guess what will happen if I set my background before I clear the screen? Right, it would be black, but I still do hello world for afterwards, so we go back to our black screen with hello world, and the color never occurs. Because what it'll do is at the end of draws when it actually draws the image for us. So we use draw as a chance to set up everything to draw. And so the, it, we set, set the background, but then we clear the background, and then we draw the text. So we get back to our black. So order does matter. So if things don't look as you expect, just rearrange the ordering in the draw command until you have it come out as you expect. So I'm going to put the background back so that we get a nice blue color again in this example. 
So you guys can all use whatever colors you like, please. I'm sure everyone has a favorite color here. All right, we all set? All right, great. So I think the next thing we're going to go into is we're actually going to start looking at some programming tactics now. Because we've got our graphics set up, so we have to start to do a little bit of programming. And so the first thing we're going to look at is something very important in computer science. We call them variables, and we'll explain just what that is in a moment. But to explain what I'm going to do first, I'm going to note that we had the word hello world appear in the box. At the same time, we have hello world appearing here, correct? So let's say that I want to update both messages. So for now, I uh, maybe want to change this to uh, hey world instead. Then when I run this, I get hey world down here, but oh, I still have hello world here because I didn't change it, right? So wouldn't it be nice if we had a way that we could keep the same value so we always updated them all together? And this is what a variable does. It's like a storage device. It will actually store something for us that we can use later. And so I'm going to create one right now. And in particular, we call any of these things with a lot of text in it, we call that a string. So you see it actually changed color, which tells me that I have it for the special type. And then we're going to give it a name. So the name I'm going to use is my message, but you can call this anything you want. This is just the name of the container for that information. And then I'm going to set my message to become hey world, and then always end with a semicolon. All right, does everyone have uh, their variable ready? All right. Everyone set? Cool. So now here's how we can use this variable. Since we want to keep everything as hey world, I can first update the print message. So instead of saying print hey world, I will comment this out so we can see the difference. I will instead write print my message. And because my message is a container, what it does is it realizes that my message is this container, and so it actually fills it in. So what is my message equal to? It's equal to hey world. And so it'll actually put hey world inside this print now. And because, as I said, I want to keep everything the same, I can also do the same thing for my text command. So I can now replace this hello world also with my message. And so when I run this, I want to get hey hello world up there. So now we run this, we get hey world appearing all over the screen. So guess what happens now if I replace hey world with hi world? Anyone want to guess? Yep, that's correct. Everything becomes high world now. We have high world printed here in the window, and we have high world printed all over this. So now, we, by using variables, instead of having to change everything all the time, we get to create one item, and we can actually work with it now over and over and over again. And this will become much more useful, especially in animation, because this allows you to now remember where things are stored on the screen, for example. So other types of variables besides a string, you can have a number. So if you want to remember where you positioned your text and you want to move the text later, so then we can do things such as an integer, which is any regular number. So int my number. Let's set it to 4 for now. You can also have, if you want a decimal point, you can use something called a float. So my decimal number. And so maybe we had set this equal to 0 0.12345. You can also have what they call a char, which is short for the word character, which is actually a, oh, yes, sorry. I'm just getting a lot of error messages. 
Oh, um, excellent. My message cannot be resolved to a variable. Um, OK, so this is actually very important that we should go over. So I guess we've so far been running programs that work, but not everything is going to work. So for example, if I don't finish writing this right now, and I try to run this, we see that I suddenly get a highlight, and I get a little color bar here. So this is very important for everyone to notice, is that you can get error messages. And these error messages actually are here to help you. They show you what's wrong, and they try to explain the problem. So in this case, we have an unexpected token, which is a symbol, and they're saying it's the word char. So they're not sure why the word char is there, because I don't do anything else. And that's because I didn't finish this line of code. So now if I were to set this to be uh, my letter equals r, for example, now when I try to run this again, everything is good. So if you do get an error message, definitely let us know. We can try to figure out what it means. And at least they will try to also guide you through. So even when you're playing by yourself later, if something goes wrong, don't worry. The system will try to tell you what's happening. And then you can take the advice and try to fix the program a little bit. So I think, yeah, thank you. That was a very good thing for us to point out. And then I guess going back to the what we were talking about, sorry. The last important variable type we're going to go over for a moment is uh, something called a Boolean, which sounds a little funny, doesn't it? Does anyone know what a Boolean actually does? OK, great. Yeah, so a Boolean value, um, it's actually named after a very famous scientist, uh, Bull, who had realized that when we're representing facts in the world that they are usually true or false. And so a Boolean actually stores just the values of truth and false which we'll see later on can also be used in programming to do certain things at certain times. So let's go ahead and say boolean um, my boolean equals, we'll go with true because it sounds nicer than things being false. And you can even see the word true uh, change colors because true and false are very special words in programming. Look like everyone's making progress. Oh, we have one person creating their own blue screen down. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like programming-wise, not the, not actually destroying. Right, because right. I think we're at the ellipse part next. So yep. that's where you were going to take over, I think. Um, yeah. I should recall if you want me to take over. Oh, well, I mean, that was the part you were working on. So if you wanted to upgrade, if not, just let me know. You can do it. All right, I'll steal your notes then, since that was your part of the code. Last time. Well, we've written it separately, but we're using it. So, crazy. <laughs> you guys are playing. All right. Would you like me to write it since I know the code? If you'd like to, please go ahead. All right. I can. I mean, we're going to switch in one hour. That's the goal. All right. So, Mark will right. take over, and I'll come around for error checking. That's why it took you took us 20 minutes to get started. OK. Yeah, so let's um, start talking about ellipsis. So Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed. All right. So we have these, you know, basic colors running around. We have hmm? there's what? He's talking about he's asking where my brother is. Oh. Was I supposed to be in the Wait, is my brother? Yeah, that's, that's not the word. Yeah. 
it's not the little, yeah, it's around four. But, um, I'm looking for your brother. Sorry for interrupting. It's all right. That's perfect. I just came from a similar coding class. Okay. On all this room. All right. So we've talked about like you know displaying text and having you know some colors in there, but we want actual shapes, right? Because that would be much more interesting than you know a solid screen. <laughs> okay, so one shape that we like talking about in you know math are circles, right? Circles are kind of nice. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to programming languages, they don't really talk about circles. They talk about something slightly more general, being an ellipse, where we have you know maybe the heights are different. We're just going to type in the word ellipse and just kind of ignore that issue where you know you can change the shape slightly. So while you're you're all playing around on this, waiting for you know everybody to get called up. You know, certainly feel free to change those numbers. But the important thing about an ellipse is we're going to have the location for the center of it, so where we want to start drawing it from. So let's just fix it at say 130, well 140 since I can't type, and 150. So that's going to be where the center of it's occurring, and the next value I'm going to write in will be the radius. So I will have radius 70, comma 70. Now, if you want to have you know different type of shape for the ellipse where it's not a circle, then change one of the 70s to a different number, and you'll see how that goes. Now, I'm going to run this without you know doing anything else, and we're going to see that the ellipse is white. Well, the circle's white. I should say. So, has everybody gotten that? Where you just type in, the, and we want to do this in the draw function, by the way. If we do it in the setup function, it's going to be covered up by the background and the clear constantly running. So, Rick, just see if everybody's yeah, we're doing that. Okay, cool. Um, and I see a few perplexed looks, so I'll walk around and just take a look. Okay, so you want this inside that draw command? So we have a circle. So, oh. yeah, so if you go with that bracket, yeah. Yep. This is a job. Oh, okay. Yeah, so apparently circle today is called like a different word altogether. <laughs> but we'll just ignore that. And while you're, you know, waiting for everybody to get called up, feel free to try changing the 70s both these 70s, maybe try like 100 and keep one of the numbers the same and just see how that shape changes. Because it'll become kind of an oval or squash circle, as I usually call them. So. Math teacher? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my uh, trade students are always what I call these squash circles. But. All right. Not too bad, right? But we don't usually just like having, you know, shapes in one color. That's kind of dull. So like the clear, the default color when we clear things was black, the default color for just shapes will be white. So let's change that because, again, we want something more interesting going on. So before our ellipse, before we run, you know, have that line, we're going to put another line that's fill, and we're going to specify a color. So again, you're going to tell it like a red value between 0 and 255, uh, green again, and blue. So since Rick has a blue background, I'm going to make something that stands out a little bit more than that. So um, I'm just going to do 125, 0, 0, and that's going to give me a red. It will probably clash very terribly, but that's just my luck. So once we do that, so when I run this, I make my ellipse red, right? The text also becomes red, and the reason the text is becoming red as well, the text was originally white, but that fill command 
just kind of permanently changes things. So if I had multiple shapes running around, I would need to change it each time I wanted to do a different shape. Just because, you know, you tell, you know, it just says, oh, we're going to make everything red right now, and we never told it not to. So that's why that text ends up being red. So, so you have a fill. Um, yeah, I'm trying to catch two people up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So jumping with you. Sorry. So I, I'll probably just come over there and type in some stuff so you will have uh, stuff going on. You have shapes. Oh, right. All right. So, so play around with some of the uh, okay. other colors and okay. maybe try guessing some other shapes. Let me just type in some so stuff for you. That way you're not you know, nine. just staring at a blank screen. Zero. <laughs> yeah, we should get rid of this one. I figure I just, so sorry. So, yeah, so just like an English sentence um, begins with a capital letter and ends with punctuation. This is something every program processing is required to have. Uh, the void setup and the void draw. Yeah. And then, so what happens is setup will essentially create things that you need to use in the program and then draw is like when you flip through a flipbook. And so drawing is each of those pages as you see them appearing on the screen. Mm -hmm. And so the drawing will tell you what you draw on the screen as you flip through this book. I'm just getting to the point where we are. Excellent. So zero. And then let's try let's try one hundred. So comma. One hundred. And then comma. And let's try one hundred again. I think this should give us yellow. So let's close the parentheses. And semicolon. I know it's a little too random. Great. Yeah. So that's where we are. Still need a circle. So if you have any questions about where we're going, we have the color. Recently addressed to ask you. But you're you're sure that's where we are. Okay. So the primary colors are red. So, and then circle there. Uh, so there are some languages that will no. use cyan and all that. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, like the color key, pixels, and SC. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Good. Yeah, cyan, uh, and when you so deal with that spectrum, it becomes a little annoying, but Ooh. yeah, RGB is kind of nice. Place, but put our circle. Well, that is, though, let's try 140. They're both used for various things, but. Yeah. It, they do change things quite a lot. So I don't know about y'all, but I have this high world that keeps appearing, and it's kind of distracting. So I'm actually going to comment that code out. So let's just scroll back to where we have this print message and the text message. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those by commenting them out because I'm tired of kind of seeing them. Now, we have this shape, and... It'd be kind of nice to do something no, with it. It's not yellow. So That's instead of just having it stationary, we're going to make a new thing called class because we want to have stuff associated to it, like a location and have the location changes. So before we get into actually building our own class, let's just talk about having a way to update it. And to do that, we're going to introduce the first really big, you know, nicety of, I guess, the programming is having a collection of numbers instead of just having a single variable for each of them, we're going to have something we call an array, which is just our way of saying a list. So at the top of the program before setup, I'm going to type in int for the integer. These square brackets. Careful. You have to make sure we don't try it. And I'm going to call it my array. So that's what I'm going to start with first is having my array. And like I said, this is going to be a list of numbers. So in size up, I'm going to create my array, begin it, tell it how large my list should be. All right. So, so far, we only have told it that we won't to have a list. We haven't told anything about the list. So my array equals, and we're just going to tell it 
it's a new list of integers, so a new list of numbers. And we're going to tell it, we want our list to be, say, four numbers long. So that's just telling them that, so the first line says, I want to have a list of numbers. Then when I get this up, I tell it, well, not only do I want a list of numbers, but my list of numbers should only have four numbers in it. So here's the weird thing, and I like giving him a hard time that computer science people can't do math. They start counting at zero. So if I hold this paper up, you know, you would say there's one piece of paper, right? Rick would say there's zero paper. Page zero. So <laughs> and a normal person would go, no, it's actually two pages because prime back, but you know. So in, we're going to have my array zero with the square bracket. So that's telling me in position zero in my list, the first thing I'm listing off, and that sounds weird, zero is one because somebody couldn't do math when they started programming. So, and they create all these languages and now we all suffer. We're going to tell it that is equal to, say, 50. And I'm just typing in some numbers. Don't necessarily make them too large because the purpose of these will be me changing where I'm positioned on the screen, have that ellipse. So we're going to see how that handles in a second. So we have my array 1 being the second position. So say negative 50. My array 3, 2, sorry, entry. I'll make it 80. And you can make these pretty much whatever numbers you like, but depending on what numbers you pick, will well, results will vary drastically. So now that I have the list made, I also want to make that location of my ellipse, that center point, I want that to be kind of fixed. So I'm going to make it go back to right below where I have the ant array. So I've made my list numbers. Now I'm going to just write ant x and ant y. That will give me a central location so that I have a starting point because we like to have you know, numbers easy to find and changeable. So when I originally plotted my ellipse, I had it at 140 and 150. So I'm going to write in 140. Hopefully. And y equals 150. So that will give me the ability to go down here and change this value right here as x, y. So let's just, so I haven't used my ellipse yet. I've just, oh yeah. Um, let me delete the stuff I commented out so I can display more at once. Um, how far up? Right there, my way. Okay. As I've written it so far, I'm not using my array. But one good programming practice in general is to constantly run your program and find out if it still works. Because it's very often something where you forgot semicolon or some other weird issue occurred. So now that I have x and y in place on my ellipse, um, in that call function right here, I have x and y. I'm going to hit run. I'm still, I haven't done anything with the array other than create it, but when I run it, it should look exactly the same because the only thing that the programs notice that's different, you know, I have a lot more code in there now, but X and Y is the only new things. So I'm going to go around and see how everybody stands on that before we actually use the array. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, yeah, that's why I'm slowly making the rounds. Okay. So why does not exist? So what we want to do is we want to go up here and just tell it. One, two, and three. And X. You fill in all four items to the list. And then any numbers. So we want to just create that. And now we run an issue. Try to make it realize this one second. Okay. 
Okay, I see the issue. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you just want to renumber that to be two. Uh, so you need to. Okay, you so I am. Int gets a name and then equals something. So I think X is the cool. name you want to use, right? All right. Uh, so it's not exist. So make sure there's one space. Just like in the best, you have to put spaces right. between words and just tell it and X. And X equals some number. And then and so so instead of X, let's. What number do you so, have? So you do that. Yeah, we want to just. Oh, that's what you want to do? Okay. okay. So then you actually uh, don't need equals. Same there. thing with Y. Yeah. You do need a semicolon, though. Oh, you, okay, you yeah, nice. and then just be careful. I think you meant X and one. Um, let's see. So, and then semicolon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, semicolon tells the computer it's at the end of the line. So, yeah, the computer's not smart enough to see that you went to the next line. You have to tell it with a semicolon. Like how you put a period at the end of every sentence. Otherwise, it's just a cliche. So do you see how we have backgrounds with numbers? And we have in the fill we have numbers. And you're familiar with red, green, blue? That's why they started. So these are all the three numbers are red, green, and blue. So if you pick numbers between zero for none and 255 for all of that color, you can mix and match the numbers to create some amount of red, some amount of green, and some amount of blue. So what kind of color is you said X is one forty and Y is one fifty, but it doesn't know what X is. Right. Okay, yeah. try it out and see what can get so now you get. Yeah, everything working. So in our ellipse, um, like when we call to so make that ellipse, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. we should have. Um, so be careful. Zero is the one first item we list. With, so we want okay. to set the second item as one and one. And rocket. Yep. And because so, X, y, X and Y were one yep. forty and one fifty. So that's the difference mm -hmm. now is, you know, instead of, yep. Um, that gives so it's helpful, so is that the fun thing we did with everyone else before you arrive? All right. You can remove so how many people think it's really weird that we start counting at zero? Anyone think that's weird? Uh, I think it's just crazy. Yeah, I, I program a lot, and every time I start counting at zero, I just shake my head and go, what's wrong with these people? But well, there is actually a reason behind it. It's just complicated. It's not a good reason. Is there a ten digits and kind of you can stare at one if you want. You just don't get, you know, get to go up as high. Well, <laughs> things things do start at zero. No, what you do is you make consider, a um, you make a counter so variable. The truth is we um, because we look at things as a placement. We're looking at how far away from the first place. So mm -hmm. really, you're asking item zero to say I'm starting at the beginning of the container with no. It's like if you start at the house. When you say one house away, you actually move to the next house. Mm -hmm. So zero houses away is the current house. He thinks that's a good reason, but anyway. <laughs> well, that's what we did. So now we okay, so what happened? we have the same result, but we have all this array, this array right. of numbers so that I put in there. But so when you said, so once we put we that array in, I wanted to make sector sector sure that I didn't change anything, didn't break the program. Well, so now we so actually want to do something with it. Purple? So, so when you say clear, it's like going to the next page of the cookbook. So ignore me. I'm trying. There's no okay. motion yet, but if we just so motion, right now, what we do is what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to update my a circle. It would draw the circle. A, my ellipse. So I want to move it around, and that's what we're out to do. So go to the very top again. This is the last variable I hope for the next two minutes. We're going to do int i. So at the very top, int i, please don't forget semicolons. But and everyone forgets semicolons at least once a time writing a new segment of code. Okay, maybe it's just me. Luke's not going to agree on that. Yeah, so we want to do it at the very top before setup is create int i. But we also need to tell it where to start. So I'm going to say i starts at 0. That seems reasonable because our list starts counting at 0. So in size setup, I'm telling it i equals 0. So since Rick ran off, I'll just make sure nothing's gotten. Oh, so at the very top, 
create an int i, which you did, and inside z, just you know, tell it int that's a start uh, i equal to one. What is i equal to? Zero. Oh, I. Just because we're going to start counting and. and my computer uh, keeps on going, but I stopped it. Um, yeah, it's already um, coming. Let's click on that. Uh, exit this. Oh, it's still running. Oh, okay. Mine's still running too. Oh, because it's just <laughs> open right there. Just, yeah. If you change windows, it still goes. All right. So, everybody has i equals zero, right? Hopefully. Yes. Okay. So now, we're going to introduce, you know, the idea of, you know, updating and a very important idea in terms of well, computer science and math, because I want to change my array, well, my location, my ellipse, I want to change it from being just x to being x plus of my array and location i. So I'm going to move it wherever is in location i of my ellipse, uh, of my array. And I'm going to do that for the y value as well. So now I'm able to have it update. All right. So all I've changed is the x value now has x plus my array i with the square brackets and y plus my array square bracket i. So when I run this, it probably won't be very interesting when it first runs, but. I can get that. Why are you not running? Okay, there we go. Why are you not moving? Is it should? Oh. It moved once and then not uh, again. All right. Sorry. Okay. So it's no longer positioned at X. Well, X was originally, but now it's positioned constantly at the one spot. So I want to update X to be X equals X plus my array I. I'm going to do the same thing for Y. All right. So now it looks like I have the same thing going on here. I have my x value is x plus my array i, y equals y plus my array i. So you would expect that the same thing would occur if I run this, that you know this position is the same as that. So I'm going to very carefully remove my array, and I'll emphasize this once again. Here. All right. So Ignore what I did there for a second. Did everybody get the x, y equals line written? All right. Maybe here. It's not really working. Well, I'll just do it. I decided to do it. That's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, that line. You already don't want this anyway. So, Rick, just make sure that everybody has the x equals line and the y equals. Ah, excellent. So we're moving stuff. Yeah, we're about to. Okay. So, now, a second ago, when we ran this, I had x plus my array. I had basically this inside my ellipse command. I don't want that there anymore. I want just x. Uh, where's the x? And I just want y. Okay. So, yeah. just like I so had before, I changed it. anything. Well, yeah. Okay. All right, so if we, yeah, so when I run this, it's going to do something, yeah, pretty much, I don't even think I turned my head in time to see it. Now, that's not very useful, is it? And the reason is, well, there's two things going on here, yeah, I just. I didn't notice the screen before. Oh, yeah, you can, you can ask him about that. Okay, so. There's two things going on. One is 
zooming off the screen. That's not very helpful. And two, I'm not using much about my array. I only have i equals zero. I've never changed i. It's changing the x value, but every time it's just doing whatever my array zero is. And my array zero was 50. So each time I'm adding 50, my x value, where my old x value was, when I have x equals x plus my array, this is back in like algebra or, well, I'm not sure what the course has become before. So I'm not solving for x and having my array i equals 0. I'm redefining where my x variable was to be where x was originally plus some number, in this case 50. So that's 140 plus 50 the second time. The next time it will be 140 plus 50, so 190 plus 50, so 240 and so on down. So it's quickly changing these numbers. And like we said, it's about 30 times a second. <laughs> so that's why it zooms off screen ridiculously fast. So it'd be kind of helpful to use those other numbers. So now we're going to introduce an idea that's very important to math and really important to our lives in general. How many people have heard of military time? How often do we use military time, though? You know, talk. That's a good answer. I um, also use it in Europe and Japan if you ever live in any of those countries. Okay, fair enough. So, and military time, as well as standard time, follows the same idea. So, right now it's, well, 3 o'clock, well, 3.24, but it's 3. In military time, it would be 15, right? So, it's just add. So, following the clock, we have 12 numbers. When I get to 13, I don't say 13, I say 1. So we're modding. That's, it's, called, it's a mathematical operation where we kind of restart counting. So 12 would actually be 0. And when you get to 13, instead of saying 13, we say 1. And in military time, you do the same type of thing, except for instead of getting to 13, you do say 13. But when you get to 25, which is next morning at 1 AM, you don't say. 25, you say 1 a.m. It'd be kind of bad timekeeping if we were just to keep adding hours constantly and never reset, right? Because then you get to a point where you have this 423 p.m. I don't know what that means. Yeah, but then you would still be modding at some point. It'd just be 300 and, well, I'm not going to finish that number because we're going to find out I don't know how many days are in a year. Okay, so. I'm going to mod this. I have five numbers. Four. Mine was, my array was four, right? Yeah. So I have four numbers. So whenever I get to four, I don't want to say i equals four. I want to change this. So I want to have i equals, well, i plus one. So that's fine. But once I get to number four, and I try plugging into my array and just go, well, my array four, that would give me an error message, because that's actually looking for the fifth entry, remember, because computer science, they start counting at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four is actually the fifth thing. I don't have anything in the fifth entry. So instead of doing that, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to put i plus one in parentheses, and then use this percent sign with four in a semicolon. That percent sign tells me to mod. You're take, you're going to go. I'm only counting numbers from between four. So, you know, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. We only have four numbers to our disposal, and we want to make sure that we don't go over that. So I'm just resetting my counter each time, like we do at 12 p.m. So instead of saying 13 p.m., we say 1 p.m. So, because we don't want to reset yearly or anything like that. We want something that's kind of more useful. So, hopefully when I run this, it'll do something useful. I'm going to change the frame rate before we all have and a I told seizure. you to change the frame rate before we start. Mine does that too. Yeah, so let's add... Okay. So... Is it set frame? Uh, no, I think it's just frame rate with a capital ah, lock. Capital lock. 
we yeah. heard the mention frame rate at the beginning, and now, like I said, we would be using it later. Yeah, so I'm going to make my frame rate. So I'm going to go into setup, right under size, just so we don't have a headache from looking at the bouncing of the ellipse. I'm making the frame rate three. So frame rate with a capital R, parentheses three, semicolon. Don't worry, I'll, I'll come around and make sure everybody's typing in just fine. But now once you have this line, we're in, I'm going to just run it so we can see while I walk around. It's bouncing around a little bit. Now if you change your numbers so that it's not, you know, 80 minus 80, 50 minus 50, you would get more than just a oscillating pattern where it's just going back to where it was originally. So if you change your numbers to be something more interesting, we'll get a different pattern. So that one's fine, you're fine. It's just why, so it goes up and then it stops. Yeah. Yeah, so you have so, more creative numbers now. Well, that's the no, no, it's the same. I'm, use, it, I'm only using the Y. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that would do it. So um, it goes up. But then why does it disappear? Well, it goes well, up. Oh, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Oh, down and then. Oh, so yeah. array is sitting oh, for a list. Okay. Okay. So when an yes, array is it's a list of numbers. Oh, so, so, um, X. so X and Y? Yes. Yeah. If you look at the <laughs> ellipse, <laughs> you see it, that, that's the center of the circle. And so, yeah, uh, all right, so what happens is we change x and y, correct? Yes. So we're adding it to the amount of the array. Yes. So what we're saying is make this change right. from so this. Have this I right so the list is telling it how much and to now move. So if i is zero. We're going to oh, so i is zero. At i in the list, but then i is located. plus one. Is and it cycles that. between the four numbers, zero, one, two, three. And zero, one, two, three. the value of x. Well, it's the amount of change in x, because um, yeah, then you're adding it, so it's like x is, it's current x plus so, 50, and then mod, then it's minus 50, because you, get because you changed i, and then it's plus 80, <laughs> minus 80, uh, and then we start over, so it's plus 50, rate. minus 50, yeah, plus 80, like minus 80, like 80. Gotcha. and you see it continues. Yeah, so, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. that's the value of x to start. No, that's why it's in setup and then in draw. Yeah, so actually you're asking about clear. So if you remove clear, now you'll see a bunch of circles that keep drawing on top of each other. Try it. Remove clear and see what happens. Yeah, coming right over. So and if you change the numbers, you'll see that what happens is okay. it won't necessarily oh. oscillate back and forth. Oh, because we have, we have an error. Lines just bouncing around and not going anywhere. So let's take a look at why we have an error. That if you have different numbers, okay. it'll go off the so, screen. This and is that's the size the of the goes off list. The screen is because so right now you're saying your list is one item. But how many so items did you try to put in the list? Mm -hmm. Our values only. Yep. Uh, let's count. Zero. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just so <laughs> no, that's fine. Well, no, the I is the same. Yep. The I is so good, now, if you're so adding to get to, to our have our x and y so be larger than that 500 and 300, which is possible depending on what your values of your array are. Yeah. So, so aren't the values now are the same? I want to go back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. Give me one second. I'll so, take um, how would you do it? <laughs> mm -hmm. To go back and forth. So remember, we said setup runs one time and draw runs many times, correct? So let's take a look at your draw code. Ah, so here we go. So what we're saying is in the draw, we're always changing x by the amount that I. And oh, y changes okay. by the amount of i. But so i, like, does i ever change in draw? So we'll talk about how we keep that all So then we change i instead of, so how many times do we actually change i? Well, once, right. But we want it to keep changing to move, correct? So if we put it in draw, now we always change i before we change x and y. So let's try it now. 80, negative 80? Yeah. Yeah, mine Isn't that cool? Awesome. Because like it's probably one of the values is not Oh, so what it's saying is um so it's trying to match it. So when I becomes a number it's saying to go to that item in this list. So this equals but that's why item in the list. Um and then what this does is it retrieves the item in the list. Well that is I think I'll make it. Oh, oh, so I itself? So I started at zero. Okay. So I plus one 
is one. No, it's not. My right. And right then one plus zero, one is right two. Right right two. Right two plus mm -hmm. one is three. Yeah. Three plus one is four. So this is actually one list. This is just the items in the list. So this is like the list zero item, the list item one, the list item two. But like, what do you see? Yeah, so what these more this part. Right, so what this is doing is, so we are changing the value of x and y. While you're typing the other stuff, you may miss And so what happens is, when x and y get changed, we're saying divide by some amount. And the amount we're choosing is based on an item in a list. OK, there you go. And so the thing is, we don't want to use the whole list. We want to use one item in the list. And i tells us which item is in the list. So, but you like this? Oh, I see. You also Right. Oh, you have the body in the setup. It only does it for oh, once. That's so weird. Perfect. Yeah. Like, it's it's clear. Clear. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, that's because okay. of background. So background. I'm sorry, I had to run yeah. yeah. Is it? It makes sense. Okay. There you right. How you do that? Oh, you're um, right. Awesome. You the I mod line uh -huh. occur so check on everyone else. Setup, so we did one time. That's so why. So we did it on the one that you on and went on with it. Uh, we have a lot of circles. Oh yeah. No, I was. Yeah. He removed the background. That's fine. Okay. And how's your coming? So Ooh, that looks pretty now cool. we have this bouncing around, and that's not too bad. But there you've also go. found that if I change these numbers just a bit, or, well, in your case, maybe if you had something written slightly differently, it could go off the screen. So I'm going to do that by just making one of these positive again so that I can't possibly, you know, bounce. So notice it's going off the screen now. It's completely gone. It was here. That's not very helpful, is it? You kind of want things to be on the screen and visible. So we're going to you know, actually make use of this idea of Booleans that we were mentioning, that true-false statement. So we want to find, you know, make sure that this, the ball that's now somewhere down here stays on the screen. So we're going to check our x value and our y values. So what we're going to do is so we're going to go down here. After we've set our x values and made it something new and set our y values to be something new, we're going to make sure that things make sense. So we're going to rerun this real fast just to emphasize something. Run. All right. Remember, Right here, where we in terms of what we think about in terms of you know, well, math. So, what I'm going to do is make sure that my x values never become less than zero. Because if it was less than zero, it would be off my screen. I wouldn't see it in the blue. So I'm going to have if x, that new x that I've just created right here, would you like me to make the font larger? No, no, just that I'm trying to figure out where I am. Uh, I'm right. I'm, I'm, I can, no, no, like just find the space and the text. Yeah, so if, if x is, zero, is less than zero, so if it's negative, I'm going to just make x equal to 0. And to do this, I need to contain this code in these squiggly brackets, braces, whatever. So if x is less than 0, then it's going to run this segment of the code with the, um, bracket, with the braces. So x equals 0, just to keep it on the screen. But at the same time, the x values could become too large. So I need to remember how large my x values could become. I have it at 500. So I'm also going to tell it if x is greater than 500, then I'm going to set x to be 500. And this will keep me within the boundaries of my x's. It won't affect my y's, but it'll make sure that my x's go too far to the left or right. I will put it back where within the screen's window. And I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. And after I demonstrate the y's, I'll certainly come around and help people. 
So I want the y's if they're becoming to, if they end up being negative. I'm going to set y to be zero. And same idea. If they become too large, in my case, if they're larger than 300, I'm going to set y to be 300. And I'm going to come around and help everybody with this in a second. But this will make sure that it doesn't get off the screen. So notice it kind of hits that corner, bounces off. With my numbers I've picked, it kind of hits this corner and goes, well, it's here and it's just going to bounce around the corner. Again, if you have better X, well, better numbers in your array, you'll get more interesting movement. But essentially what's going on is I'm making sure that the red ball is always visible. So let me come around and make sure that everybody knows what's going on. So when you go here, yeah. all right, so let's take a look at your code. So you have it, it's negative, all right. So if you move it up or down, yes. that is what takes away. Yeah, it works. Right. So, right. do you want to change? I'll come back and take a look at yours in a second. Okay. So, try some new numbers for x and y. So, you put up where you want it. Oh. You still want y. Yeah. Well, what you want to change is the number. So, 100 is currently how far up or down yeah, it is on the like screen. Look at it, okay. Like, so, where am I? You know, yeah. and, then I, and then x, x is how far across it is on the screen. Yeah. Right. So, we want the. Figure out what I'm supposed to type. We want the squirrel. The squirrely brackets mm -hmm. right here around this zero. And then we always want to send them up. And then after we press up on the keyboard, we also want parentheses. And that there it is. that's one of those things where you know brackets so and X is how far we are around with the pad. But so, so parentheses around so the try some X try different X and Y until it looks like you like. And then the rest braces around the rest. And then the same idea. Yeah. So because I think I'm going to go to the they will like, so if x, y, and i are all like variables, they will stand for any number which tell you where the ball is. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think I understand that. Excellent. And how's it look for you? Good. Cool. Any questions? But it's kind of interesting. Um, it has three locations. Like one here, and then like one here, and then like one here. So was it doing that before? No. So then it's something new you wrote, correct? Yeah. So what's the new code? So now we have this when X is larger than So do we know what it's doing? Yeah, it's like if it's on the edges, it bounces back. Okay. So maybe that's why it's moving to the newer places because of the balance. I'm not sure because it's not even going to the edge. Well, that's because, do you tell it to show it's on the edge, or do you yeah, move it before it hits the edge? Oh. Remember, it doesn't actually show the image until it hits the end, so that's why when we switch clear and background, it did the clearing and you never saw the background again. So order matters. So before it draws the picture, it's doing the check. Is there a way to like put like a weight on it or something? A weight? Like, wait a second before it clears? Yeah. Oh. Like, um, screen. Hmm. So you so want like, it to just pause? Yeah, like pause for a second so you can see if you both up there. Oh, I see. Or, like, so sure what you could do is you just have to be clever with your order, of like the math order. So the reason right now it is doing that is because, as I said, it, the order is it draws after it does all the commands. So if you want to see the picture before, then if you move this to the top, then it would first draw the image. And then the yeah, next so time, that would happen. Right? Oh, yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, so you can try that. So if you can see a ball kind of yeah. trapped onto free, the yeah. screen. So now, right, I'm gonna check on the other it would be a lot more interesting right if we could have more than one ball going around, right? Because. Right. You know, there's no reason that why what, what I've done so far couldn't be done multiple times. How um, you look perplexed? Do you need help? Oh no, I'm just reading that. Oh, okay, fair enough. So it would be kind of helpful to have more than one, you know, ball bouncing around on the screen. And we've written enough code that there's no reason that. Well, maybe I could just copy and paste basically everything I've done, and you know, just change the, and you know, have an x1, y1. 
and you know just do everything the same with the same code, but changing that. But then if you want to do it for three balls, then that's going to be more copy and pasting, and it's bad practice to do that. So instead, we're going to take all the same code and make a class. We're going to make an object because this circle has a lot of the same properties that we might want another one to have. This ability to be captured by the corners of the screen so it doesn't bounce off. This updating based on this array. So maybe it would be nice to have you know, this change more often. So in pr that was weird. Why there's two, I don't know. But I'm glad it wasn't like new. OK. So if you programmed in other languages, it becomes one of these very cumbersome things to make a new class. In processing, it doesn't. It's just a matter of clicking on this little uh, down arrow right beside my tab. And it gives me an option for a new tab. And what's the name for the file? So we're going to call it my class. All right. So now we're going to create this class. Just turn away because I'm always going to mess this up if I don't look. All right. Yeah, that's what I thought. I always want my classes to be public for some reason. So, oh, uh, every time I try doing it, it, I don't know. Maybe I'm typing other things and I don't realize it. Ah. So the first thing I'm going to do is write class my class, and that will be kind of general idea. So when we're making these integers and all that, we are creating. You know, variables of preset things that already existed. Strings were just words that we had in quotations. We had numbers that were, you know, integers and all that. But now, when we create a class, we're creating our own type of, you know, object structure. So my class will allow us to handle this. And what we're going to do is just take in what we need to have on the other thing. So earlier, when we were working with our ellipse, we needed an x and y, right? So do you want me to teach in privates? Because um, I didn't want to, and then you mentioned it yesterday. OK. Um, you can write the word, I guess. I'm just going to write int. Int right. x, int y. If it's I guess, we're going to ignore good coding for a moment, just for clarity of sanity. So int x and int y, that's going to be my center of my um, ellipse. And I'm also going to make a int r for my radius. And that will give me the ability to have you know, the three things I really care about when it came to my ellipse. If you like having your ellipse with different you know, radius, where one number was different, then have an r1, r2, and put them in appropriately. OK, so that's the data we needed. But now we need to actually construct and tell it more information. So public my class. And before I can create this object, I need to get the numbers from somewhere and tell it. So in the original code, when I run this, I, I need to give it some information. So I know need to know what the ellipse will look like, essentially. So again, int x. I know you probably know programming, so this might make you twitch a little bit when I don't have different, like an xt in there. So int y and int r. This is just telling it what I'm expecting. I'm expecting an integer for the x value. I'm expecting an integer for the y value and an integer for the r value. And if we go into the program after we try make, using this and we put, put something else in there, it's going to give us an error. So x equals x, right? Everybody's willing to hope that's true. So I'm just going to write x equals x. I'm going to do y equals y. And r equals r. The easiest math all day, right? So what we're essentially doing is we're, we have our x value for this my class. 
and I'm just telling it the one that I'm going to send to it is the same. Just set them equal, which seems reasonable. So that's just having it as this. And we also want to have a draw function. So what I'm going to do is do public void draw. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take all that code that I had you know, suffered and taken a lot of time to write and copy it from the other one. So I'm going to let you, so the end, what we're going to do, just so that if you're ahead of me and you already have all of this you know, written down, just go ahead and go to your original thing and try copying what you think we would want from that draw command in the main, in the other tab. If you're not there yet, then just, you know, let us know and we'll help you get the rest of the way. And if you're copying and pasting, the other thing, if you're already at that point. Question, wouldn't you have to change the names of them? Hmm? Wouldn't you have to change the names of, like, like. Uh, void is, uh, the draw, you're saying should be a different name. Um, yeah, the draw is, you might think, that's kind of confusing. I have two functions called draw. You're telling. Kind of like X, Y. Yeah, well, that's true, and that's a good question. Now, so essentially what we have is we have a draw command that's, you know, what I, when I tell you to draw something, that's what you're thinking of. Like, that I tell you all to draw, you all start drawing, essentially, right? But you also could draw on your own without me telling you. That's kind of what it is, or I could tell just you to draw, which would be more accurate than you draw on your own. That would be weird if the program did something I didn't tell it. But, so there's different kinds of draw. The draw has a different name depending on if it's the object doing it or the main program doing it. So that's the difference is one we're going to tell the, pro the, the, the just the circle to draw itself. And the other time the program's just going, I'm going to draw everything I know about. So that's the difference is one, the program's palette versus the circle just trying to draw itself. So let's see. Um, yeah. Well, I know there are multiples. Yeah. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to. We also need that array that we were talking about. So int my. Right. So, I uh, changed tabs. That's all right. My array, and now in that class, I'm going to do the same thing where it's my array equals new int four, and I'm just going to copy and paste some code from my original program. So. So anything that involves my array, I'm copying and pasting from the previous page and putting it into my class. And then I'm going to go here and copy and paste all of the code that I essentially have involving the ellipse, checking the boundaries for x and y. I'm going to copy and paste that, so I'm going to remove that. Oh, paste that in. But I pasted it in the wrong spot. And we're going to paste this into the draw. Now that we have that taken care of, make sure you have your end line. What I'm going to do now, very quickly, just for the sake of time, I'm going to construct these arrays, uh, my uh, objects, so that we can see that we can have multiple balls bouncing. So I'm going to create a my class circle one and a my class circle two.
So at the very top, before void setup, create the circle one and circle two. I'll make Rick go around and be cl clear. And then when you get to draw uh, into setup, sorry, we're doing Circle one equals new my class. And remember, my class requires you to give it an x value, a y value, and a radius. So 140, 100, 40. Circle two equals new my class. One, 240. 60, 50. So this should give me, it creates two circles for me. And now I need to do circle one dot draw, and that will draw it. Circle two dot draw, and that will draw it as well. Not quite. So my class is just like int, and it's just like. And I'm going to make sure I didn't miss it. So it needs a name. You created my class here. Right? You made something there called my class? Yeah. So now we need to name it because we need to create a version of it. Just a second. Yeah, whatever you like. Just give it a name. Yeah, that's a good name. And make two of them? Yep, just give them different names. Uh, I think my X and Y's are making sure I don't do anything weird. Alright. Why is it not drawing both? I need you to look at my code, Rick. I only have one circle being drawn. Um, I think it's because you drew one very close to the edge of the screen. Um, does that what it looked like? That's what it looks like from looking at it. Oh, that's, so, oh yeah, you're right. So two minutes over. Actually, yeah. So, but using this class, you're able to construct more on there. And we do plan on posting some more examples and demos so that you can see you know, what you can do with just by doing a little bit more with what we have. But using this class, you're able to get multiple circles bouncing around the screen, and you can do more involved things as well. And like I said, we'll have more examples posted on Rick's website within a week. Oh, no, so, Rick, would you like to open your business card? I can do that. If people would like uh, access to the website, come to me, and I can give you a card with the website. That way you can see more examples of how you can program. Okay. Um, oh, you mean just like to, yeah, just, if you just hit X on this, you'll be fine. Oh, you work with Western Pickens? I actually work with Slumber Yes, but um, yeah, okay. so actually, you're my turn. I, I, oh, sorry, I misread that. Sorry. <laughs> right. That'll work. Great. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I know. Wait. Thank you very much. Yeah, so they're continuing to use this place. Yes, showing down except it's so close. Oh, I forgot about mine. Isn't this something you could download? No. Something. All right. Wait. 
There we go. All right. Oh, I so you have entered twice. Okay. Why is that error? Sir, I'll be going up once in four. Okay. Yeah. Yes. If you go back up. All right. So right. we'll see the X X. Do you think we could close? Uh, so you get uh, yeah, we can close the session. Oh, sorry. So do you get rid of the int X and then fly? Yes. Yeah. You just need to get rid of the duplicates. Perfect. Sorry. Um, so how do we? Is it just a stop button? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to the broadcast. Okay. Great. And thank you all very much for attending today. Okay. All right.